Live, Dr. K from uh, All Valley Animal Care Center joining us this morning. New topic. We haven't done this one before, I don't think. We're talking dogs and porcupines this morning. And the only thing that comes to mind for me is the movie Homeward Bound when uh, Chance happens upon a porcupine and thinks it's some friendly animal and finds out otherwise. So what happens with, uh, with dogs and porcupines? There are porcupines ar around here, correct? Oh, yes. We just had a dog that uh, this lady found on Highway 78. Okay. Uh, yesterday, and if you could, if this is your dog, it's some sort of black, oh, griffin looking dog, co contact the Y uh, County Sheriff's Office and they can get a hold of us and okay. we can hopefully find its owner. But anyway, this dog came in with its face and body filled with these porcupine quills. Right, yeah, you brought some in here. And, yeah, uh, and this is just a small sample. Yeah. And so it's a little dark, um, and is where they poke into the animal, and this is what sticks out, but they can be all the way in, and once they go in there, it's tough, and we do, we do the best we can getting them all out, but it's not that easy because they're right. all over the place. Okay, and, and depending on what kind of dog it is, you might not be able to find some of these, right? Right, well, because sometimes they go right in the skin, if you can't feel them or see them, they're like gone, but they eventually surface back out okay. someplace at least. But can that, can that lead to infections, thing like, uh, things oh, like yeah, that? Oh yeah, this poor dog's face was all swelled up, and they can go anywhere. They're just obnoxious. Okay, but uh, first things first. So if if you have a dog and he does, you know, happen to have some quill, is is this pretty much automatic? Call the vet. That's what I would do unless there's a very few, uh, okay. only a few quills because they yeah, bring them to the, to us and then we'll give your dog an anesthetic and we start pulling these quills out. Okay. You know, but if you do get a few, then you need to use like needle nose pliers, and get right down to the skin and just grab them and just pull them out. Okay. And they're not that difficult to remove, except when the dog's awake, it's not. No, I'm sure thing. it's not pleasant, but they're better off if they're out than staying right. stuck in there, right? Because then we can put them on antibiotics and okay. some sort of pain management uh, so that they'll be more comfortable during the recovery. Okay, and if you are going to, maybe if there's only a few and you're going to try to remove them at home, uh, what, what would you treat the wound with afterward? Well, I, I would just clean it with the hydrogen peroxide, and then you can put neosporin on it. But they're pretty difficult. Yeah. I mean, it's not that big a deal if it's with just a few, you know. But the problem with it, it seems like, my my saying is once a porcupine quill dog, always a porcupine quill yeah, dog. Yeah, so they just don't learn. <laughs> they don't. I mean, the w the need to hurt that porcupine is so strong, even if they come in with a the face, they just go right back in because okay. on places that have worked before near a forest, these people would bring their dog in <laughs> every month to get these porcupine quills, but they just don't learn and they're g they'll just go right back at them. Okay. So really nothing else you can do other than just, you know, try to keep tabs on where your dog is and don't right. let it go running out in the wilderness. Right. Because they don't know what it really is and their first instinct is try to bite it, but guess what? They get a mouthful of quills and it's pretty ugly. Yeah, it sounds pretty bad actually. All right, well there you go. Try to keep <laughs> your dogs away from the porcupines and just in case your dog happens to get some of those quills and you know, uh, you now know what to do.